my name is abhishek uh, and this is the you know uh, kickstarter session on bitcoin breakdown so i know that you know this whole uh, domain web3 blockchain crypto everything gets very uh, you know confusing at times and we try to uh, figure out a way through because i've been through the same journey uh, so i'll just uh, start here so my name is abhishek uh, as uh, you know it's already mentioned uh, i'm a software engineer by profession uh, i did 3 uh, years of work uh, at uh, jp morgan so in jp morgan itself my blockchain journey started because uh, if you guys know there is a term called jpm coin so just like you know indian government is trying to come up with a digital rupee uh, jp morgan has come up with a uh, sort of a digital cbdc currency called jpm coin uh, which they use internally to transact so that's when you know i became curious about uh, because i was working on the front end side of it and i wanted to learn more about blockchain so <laughs> funny enough uh, i applied for one of the postings inside and for that uh, you know i started learning about blockchain and, and initially it was slightly you know very confusing because when you start learning about this subject uh, it's very overwhelming i must say because you learn about something uh, you know there is not a single resource to start with but as soon as you start with something right it branches out into so many things it gets very confusing and very overwhelming at times so that's why you know after i was done like i was done with you know initial part and i started you know learning uh, understanding a little bit about bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency blockchain in general i thought to consolidate all the knowledge and you know create a guide where uh, everybody can start from 0 to 100 okay uh, there is some okay cool uh, that's about me uh, nothing much to oh so i saw uh, recently started this uh, third block community at uh, current venture that uh, i'm a part of masters union so this community is to you know essentially teach people educate and create awareness about what web3 is what blockchain is and at the end uh, you know it's not just enough to know about some things you have to use it so uh, we are trying to you know empower people and encourage people to use uh, web3 and uh, blockchain technologies uh, okay so let's get started uh, i'll set the expectations right uh, in terms of what you're going to get out of this uh, you know one hour session uh, it's a very small time to cover everything so that's why this is a you know small guide where i'll i'm going to teach you the core core of the whole technology and landscape once you understand this i'm pretty sure you'll be able to understand any and every uh, blockchain or web3 related projects that's out there everything will start making sense to you right now you know this is this is like a crux of it somebody created a crux of it and on top of that everybody started creating something so consider this is the you know core core of blockchain okay so what do we know nothing this is the expectation this is how i started so i'm just i'm i know i'm pretty sure you know there are folks who are on, probably on this call also uh, who must be knowing more about blockchain than me but uh, this is uh, you know it's initial kick starters and what do you want to know everything so is it possible for me to teach you everything <laughs> that's not possible there are people in this uh, whole you know domain there are a lot of folks uh, who are you know uh, you can say experts and there are a lot of folks who are just fluffs but uh, what i'm going to say is uh, not everybody knows everything about blockchain not a single person knows everything about blockchain but there are experts obviously and they can teach you uh, they can talk about anything and everything but here the you know aim is not to get everything is just to you know get a get a head start in terms of where do you start learning blockchain okay so what is blockchain now blockchain at term was you know it mostly people will tell you that you know everybody started recognizing blockchain in 2010 when there was some guy called satoshi nakamoto you know created this whole white paper of bitcoin and he started uh, transacting creating network of bitcoin and transacting in terms of bitcoin after bitcoin this whole term called blockchain came into existence but the term blockchain was tossed way before that it's like 1990s uh, you know this whole paradigm was created now if i tell you what blockchain is it's in a simple uh, words is just a distributed database anything that you hear related to blockchain is just a distributed database i'll tell you how this distributed database works distributed as in you know same set of data it's just a copy of data which is with everybody when everybody is holding the same piece of data that data is said to be distributed so that everybody has a copy of that particular database and when everybody has a copy of it and they talk to each other they connect to each other 
that time it becomes peer to peer network so this is the whole you know sort of a landscape uh, what you keep seeing on internet there like exchange tokens bnb utility tokens there is bitcoin ethereum polka dots there are so many technologies but they are all you know confined into some sort of categories so these are categories just just a picture guys don't worry uh, too much about it at the end of this i'm pretty sure you and everything will start making sense so let's see how bitcoin works okay so as i already told you right what is node in p2p network p2p is essentially peer to peer network as i already told you right multiple people over the internet when they connect with each other it becomes a peer to peer network you are a peer you are connecting with other peer so consider you are just a you know simple guy who has computer and you have a ledger now what is ledger uh, let's say if i tell you that uh, you know uh, you have to maintain a book in which accounting book if people from accounting background should be able to relate where you record transactions saying that you know let's abhi gave 100 rupees to mukesh so that becomes your one transaction how do you write that in a ledger book similarly just how i've written over here you write it into a ledger uh, you know book similarly mukesh spent 2000 at reliance mart that's another transaction so take a piece of paper start writing all the transaction and that becomes your ledger now this is a record with you now consider there are four different folks like you know just for the illustration purpose i have depicted over here everybody has the same ledger in ledger everybody has written abhi has given 100 rupees to mukesh mukesh has also written abhi has given 100 rupees to mukesh rahul amit all of them has written the same entry in their ledger so this when they all connect to each other on internet they start talking to each other then it becomes a peer to peer network this is how the whole network is made and it's called fabric fabric of the network so when people tell you that you know a uh, particular blockchain technology or uh, you know technology fabric essentially they are meaning the network the you know essentially the core part of the network and uh, there is this uh, myth about you know yeah there is blockchain there is bitcoin there is ethereum but how do i become part of it so it's not a rocket science there is a simple software for you know uh, if you want to become a part of a blockchain or any bitcoin ethereum any any blockchain there is a simple software that you have to install on your machine now uh, the level of participation that is something that is as question over here so let's say if you want to become the core of the network like you know you have to participate 100% that's called something as minor so i'll i'll come to the minor later part but essentially you know uh, that requires you to install a software but what if you just you just want to be a part of network where you can transact with someone on bit uh, in terms of bitcoin you don't want to be the you know core working entity so in that case it's as simple as you know downloading or creating a wallet account now wallet is nothing like just now like you have a you know physical wallet where you keep your money in terms of bitcoin and digital currency there is a digital wallet it could be an application it could be a you know web app it could be a physical hardware also i will come to the part where you know different wallet types are there but is essentially that it's just a simple application where you know uh, like real in real life you have your address in digital uh, world also you have something called address okay okay let's get to transactions now hi, hi, like, for example let's say take a transaction where abhi spends 100 rupees at amazon let's say i have gone to amazon amazon is let's say in this world uh, is accepting bitcoin as a valid mode of currency and i went and purchased something worth rupees uh, let's say 100 so i have done a transaction to amazon now now how everybody knows about this transaction like someone has to you know know about this transaction no that i have done something but in the peer to peer network unless and until everybody knows about the transaction that transaction is not valid okay so i have spent 100 rupees at amazon what i'll do is let's say i'm connected to mukesh and rahul so what i'll do is mukesh rahul and amit i'll send the transaction saying that i spent 100 at amazon to rahul to amit and to mukesh i'll in essentially i'll send it to everybody on the network saying that you know guys this is what i've done the transaction on network okay so that becomes your step one node one sends t1 to all connected nodes okay in second part as soon as these guys they receive my transaction they will do some so they'll they'll have a pool pool as in waiting list in waiting list they'll add a transaction saying that you know abhishek has done a transaction and this is my waiting list this is one transaction added into the waiting list so i have showed, showed like this orange color sheet you know that's essentially a waiting pool so just like a ledger you let's say i have one more record 
where you're keeping all the transactions which are in waiting list. They are not confirmed yet. Like you have to verify, right? Whether I have 100 rupees to transfer to Amazon, whether Amazon is, uh, you know, able to accept that transaction. So that's just a waiting list where you, where I keep all the transactions that's coming to me. Okay. So this transaction has been sent to everyone. Then I said like validation happens. So what exactly valid validation is? So in terms of, uh, if I tell you that, you know, uh, in real world, if I, let's say give hundred, uh, hundred rupees to, let's say a store manager saying, uh, to buy something, he'll check the note, right? He'll check the note, whether it's a, you know, uh, whether that note is real or fake, how do you get that? You see that governor sign over there, there is stamp and there is, uh, you know, barcodes and stuff. So you verify all those things to, you know, check whether the note is correct or not. So here in digital world, how do you validate whether, you know, the transaction, the money that I'm spending is real or not. So there are, you know, three checks that are mentioned over here, but it's essentially more than that. But these are, you know, in, you can say that these are the crux of whole validation process. So when I send the transaction to, uh, let's say this particular address or Amazon, first thing is they'll have to verify whether sender has a balance or not whether I have hundred rupees to spend or not. If I don't have hundred rupees, how can I send hundred rupees to Amazon if I don't have it? So that's sender's balance. Then valid authority. Whenever on in digital world, if I'm, you know, spending some money, then that has to come from me. So how do, how someone verifies that, you know, Abhishek had, let's say Mukesh had hundred rupees and Mukesh has spent that hundred rupees, but that hundred rupees actually come from Mukesh. Because if you see in digital world, what happens is, uh, you must have heard about, you know, hacking and, you know, different things on internet where you're doing something and it gets hacked or something. Okay. So essentially, uh, I'm signing that transaction saying that, you know, this is hundred bucks. I'm sending it to Amazon and here's my signature. So just like on checks, right? You do your signatures. Similarly here, you're signing the transaction so, and someone has to valid, uh, verify your signature, right? So that's called validate, uh, valid the authority and a uh, validation of signature. Now, whatever signature you do, that signature actually belongs to you. That comes from, you know, simple terms. Uh, you have account address and password. Password is something private key. So private key is your using which you do signatures. Okay. So here I've added a screenshot of actual transaction on Bitcoin. So if you see this particular screenshot, first part is fees. So whenever you do some transaction in, in any network, so Everybody in network has to validate, right? As I said, but validation has uh, one typical aspect to it. It's called, uh, how do I say it? Uh, when somebody is doing work of validation for you, they are essentially doing some work for you. How do, how do I incentivize them to do some work for me is by paying some fees. And this is very nominal amount. If you see here, it's in 00000731 Bitcoin. And now it's a, it's a lot because Bitcoin prices, you know, keeps fluctuating. But essentially, if you look from, you know, the transaction purpose, it's some fees that you have to pay to rest of the people on the network who are validating your transaction and creating a block out of it. So that's a fee that you have to pay in order to get your transaction confirmed. Then if you come to the later part, this part hash, this hash is nothing but, uh, you know, when you create a uh, transaction, that transaction gets encoded into, uh, you know, some random format which is verifiable by other people on the network. Now hashing is a process which is very old if you consider in terms of technology, uh, but uh, it has been put together in this particular technology, uh, Bitcoin, where you know, you're know you using hashing as one of the tool to uh, you know uh, keep data intact. Sometimes what happens is, uh, uh, let's say underlying transaction, instead of Abhi sends uh, 100 rupees to Amazon, Someone went and made that hundred rupees to thousand rupees. So if you make that hundred to thousand, how do the validators know that, you know, that transaction has been tampered or changed is this via this hash. So if you change anything on transaction hash changes, consider this as a black box where you feed some data and at the end you get some gibberish. Now that gibberish changes every time you change even a single, uh, you know, comma or dot in the inputs. Okay. So, ha, huh, okay. This part is very interesting. You see, there is some gibberish over here and there is this some data like 0 0.0075 BTC. 
So someone is trying to feed in 0 0.007, uh, 0.075 Bitcoin. And that's the input part. Okay. And after this green arrow, this is the output part. So in output, essentially, you know, I'm in Bitcoin, how it works is let's say if you want to uh, send hundred bucks to someone, let's say hundred bucks to Amazon that I'm sending, but I, in my wallet, I have balance of 500. So I cannot just, you know, send hundred bucks. I have to first send 500 bucks as an input. And in the transaction, what will happen is it will bifurcate 500 into 100 and 400. So 100 will go to Amazon, but that rest of the 400 balance that will again come back to me. So here, that's why you see there are two uh, outputs. One is something that is getting paid. Second is the balance that is coming back to me. Now, now essentially what happens is, uh, it's like, you know, you have hundred rupees note, you give it to a store manager. And your bill is, let's say 50 bucks. So he'll give you 50 bucks back. So here, same, same situation, same scenario. Yes. You want to spend hundred bucks, but you have 500 bucks. So balance will come back to you, but hundred bucks will go to someone else. Okay. Now there are certain tags over here. It says that unconfirmed transaction. So just like I said, right, when you send transactions to everybody, they'll add into their validation pool at that time. It's not confirmed yet. Like people has to still do the validation, put it in a block. And then, you know, put it in a blockchain. So by the time the whole process takes place, your transaction is said to be unconfirmed, unconfirmed because everybody still needs to do the validation part. Okay. Now I've already added the link over here. So blockchain.com slash explorer. So here you can essentially see like there is one aspect of uh, blockchain that, you know, everybody keeps talking about it's visible, it's transparent. So whatever you do on blockchain, like you do transactions in Bitcoin, Ethereum, anything it's transparent. It's, uh, you know, you can see that throughout the world, anybody can go and validate whether I have spent hundred bucks to Amazon or not. How that happens is this particular URL. You go to this URL. Uh, um, let, let me show you right now. Okay. So this is what the URL looks like. Okay. Here you can track all the prices and everything. Okay. Here, this is the interesting part. This is the blocks in a blockchain. Okay. Now, if I click on any of the block, it will show me the details inside that block. Okay. Number of transactions. So see TX zero, TX one, TX two. These are the transaction that has happened. So if I go inside any one transaction, so it says it's from Coinbase. Coinbase is one of the exchanges and to this particular address and how much they have spent is this much money. Okay. So I'll, uh, the snippet that I showed you, right. It's from this particular page only. So anytime you can just go and, you know, do random uh, checks with this particular thing. So this is block number seven, six, five, one, seven, seven. So essentially, uh, there are, uh, seven lakh blocks before this particular block. Okay. So this is just a number. So first block is zero, then one, two, three, four, five, like that. It's just a block number. Okay. Uh, coming back to this. Now everybody has validated your transaction saying that you have balance. It's essentially you that has been sending the money and your signature is valid. So once that happens, what do you do? Your transaction is validated. Now there are two queues. Okay. First is waiting list. Then once your transaction is confirmed, then you add it into a confirmation list. So there'll be, let's say 10, 15 transactions, which are validated and confirmed. Now, what you do is you take a block. You put the transaction inside a block. Let's say you have 30 transactions in queue, which are valid. You take those 30 transactions, put it in a block, create a block and send it to everyone on the blockchain. Just because every peer on the network, a B, Rahul, Amit, Mukesh, everybody needs to have the same set of data. So you created, this is the uh, process of creating block. Okay. Now you added the transaction in a block. Now you have a block. What do you do with this block? You send it to everyone across the network. That process is called flooding. So flooding is nothing but, uh, you know, whoever you are connected to on network. Uh, okay. Something else. Okay. Wh whoever you connected to on network gets this block and they'll essentially verify this block. Anything on the network cannot go without, uh, you know, uh, without validation. Someone has to validate even after, even the time when you are creating the transaction time, we are creating the block time. We are adding the block onto your uh, local blockchain copy. So here Abhi has created one block. You see, initially he had three blocks. He created a new fourth block with the new T1 transaction. 
he added that block into his local blockchain now it will go to rahul amit and mukesh and everybody will verify that block first and add it into their respective blockchain copy this blockchains you see right everybody has the same copy so let's say if my length of my blockchain is 10 blocks then everybody on the network will have the same 10 blocks everybody will maintain that same 10 block copy okay now when i send it to you know everyone on the network again similar checks happen when you create a block there are certain checks as to you know how did you create a block did you add a valid transaction into a block or not whether you have permissions to create a block or not those sort of validation check which i'll go through uh, in you know uh, next part of the presentation that happens and everybody has to do this particular validation okay so here rahul amit mukesh everybody will check the block It'll, they'll verify your identity like whoever sending the block they'll check the identity of that person and at the end they'll say that yeah this block looks good let's add it into our local blockchain and that's how everybody has to confirm on the blockchain saying that you know this particular block looks okay once they do that after that there is another process like flooding keeps on happening so after you added a new block to your blockchain what you'll do is you'll take that block you send it to let's say next 10 people who are connected to you so on internet how essentially you're not connected to everyone you're connected to let's say 10 people uh, in your region but those 10, uh, 10 people they are also connected to 10 more folks so that's how whole internet gets created right similarly in blockchain network you are also connected to you know different folks those folks also are connected to different folks that's how single block gets propagated throughout the network and essentially at the end it's called final state of the blockchain everybody will have the same copy okay so that's the up till now what we have learned is how the transaction gets created how the transaction gets validated second and how transaction gets added into a block and how blocks get propagated so if you take any of the blockchain like bitcoin is one particular you know example but let's say ethereum there is polygon there is polka dot there are so many uh, you know blockchains out there solana cardano essentially they all work on the similar principle they change the flavor here and there in terms of how the validation happens how the block creation happens how if, how the block validation happens now how like just now you know we saw that there are a couple of validation checks some blockchain might add couple of more validation or they might altogether change the validation process so those process are different it's just the attribute of the uh, step is different but step is same so if you take any of the blockchain you should be map out these steps into those blockchains also okay now here we spoke about the thing called creation of block now that process is called mining you must have heard of this term called mining like someone is doing the mining now mining uh, term comes from you know a similar analogy from physical world where you actually you know in a mine you are trying to you know dig up something dig up gold and you know get gold out of it similarly on blockchain also you are trying to dig up a block and that block you need to send it to everyone now to do that to create a block everybody needs to be incentivized everybody needs to you know why would i put my resources why would i put my processing power to create a block for someone else's transaction why would i do that because you get money out of it so you must have heard about this thing called bitcoin mining reward now reward is something that uh, if you do that process the whole network will give you some money now that money is called mining reward and that's how miners on the network on the blockchain earns bitcoins so earlier in 2010 uh, uh, you know you could use just simple laptop to do mining and you would get a very nice amount of bit but like earlier it was 120 then it keeps on halving so in bitcoin especially i think currently the mining rewards are somewhere around uh, 6.2 or something or probably it must have halved now so every uh, you know 2000 blocks the mining reward gets halved so but, but at the same time bitcoin price is also increasing so even if you get two bitcoins that's worth so many thousand dollars so that's why mining is a very lucrative process. I'll explain you in general how, high, how mining works. Okay. So I told you about there is the valid transaction pool. Then there is uh, another queue where you add your validated transactions. Okay. So when first the transaction comes to you, it's unconfirmed. It's not validated by you. So you add it into a 
pool where like, here you see t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 these are all transaction that has come to you you have not done any processing on the transactions yet you take a transaction you do those three checks whether the sender has a balance whether the receiver is a valid person whether the sender has authority to you know do that transactions or not once that checks and that validations is done you put it on a queue called chosen transaction this is another queue where you keep your confirmed transaction like you know how let's say you consider you are doing some work uh, when you uh, uh, do the pre processing on the data you pick it up and put it somewhere now that's a ready queue now all you have to do is while creating the block pick up transactions from the ready queue and start creating the block okay now here the process that i mentioned earlier hashing hashing call hashing comes into the picture so there is a sp uh, specific algorithm called sha256 uh, for tech folks i think they might recognize uh, what exactly sha is but uh, for non tech folks is just a algorithm which converts your data into some gibberish so that uh, nobody is able to tamper your data nobody is able to change the transactions of your data now how do you make sure that you know you might have here let's say you have three transactions but in real world let's say you have thousands of transactions that you have to add in a block how do you make sure that out of all those thousand transactions none of the transaction gets changed even if you know single dot changes in let's say uh, uh, transaction number 999 your whole block is invalid it's supposed to be invalid like how do you make sure that so let's say you take all the transactions transaction 1 2 3 4 you create a hash of you take single transaction create a hash out of it create a take a second transaction create a hash out of it now you got two hashes you put together both the hashes and you again hash that whole thing so let's say here i have chosen four transaction t1 t2 t3 and t4 i'll do the primary hashing on those i'll join all the hashes again i'll do hashes on those whatever hash i get again i'll join the hashes until i get a single hash so let's say you have 1000 transaction you will first do 1000 times hashing then join all of them so like that it it start becomes like a tree okay so now after at the end you get a single hash out of those 1000 transactions now consider you are changing how uh, one of the amount and one of the transactions at the core like you know 999 transaction you're changing the amount now that will reflect in the main here you see merkle root hash 0123 this particular hash will change so that nobody can change a transaction without changing the main hash someone if you change it you'll have to do the whole process again and that's how you know someone comes to know that whether someone has tampered with data or not now this whole tree here you see it's called merkle tree merkle root you can uh, you know google about this algorithm uh, about how to create a merkle tree now merkle tree is nothing but i told you right you keep on combining the hashes until and unless you get a single hash now in a block you put all 1000 transactions plus you put this merkle root the final hash that you got right you put that hash you put 1000 transactions and on top of that there are certain other you know uh, sanity checks that you do uh, to create a block okay so that creates your block now let's see what kind of what is the structure of the block okay so this is the block structure as i said right like these are all 1000 transactions that you have added this is the merkle hash the final header hash that is added onto it and this is transaction counter counter is just tells you that you know how number of transactions that is there in the block so in our case it will be let's say 1000 and this the block header this is the block body part this is the main part of the block like it's a body like what you want to send in the block block header is something that i told you right sanity checks so what what all sanity checks you have to add so we'll start from block version so block version block number is something you know this if you left hand side is the structure right hand side is the actual block that is there in the you know blockchain you can take this and you know verify whether this block exists in bitcoin network or not so block version block version is nothing but this number you see right 76511 uh, 64511 that's the block version it's it essentially tells you then what is the length of your uh, blockchain and what is the current number for that particular block that you are you have created okay then time stamp of course when you create a block everybody needs to know that at what time the block was created 
then there is parent block hash now this is very interesting uh, we keep on saying that you know uh, the blockchain is a chain how do you create a chain you take one block you take the second block and you have to connect both the blocks together right how do you connect the blocks together so here every block as i told you like there is this hash header so once you create the block you have to hash whole value of the block again to create a hash okay so there is body there is header you combine both of them create a hash value that becomes identity of that block which is known to blockchain now your previous block on the blockchain must be having that sort of header you take that header and put it in your block so okay so essentially what you are trying to do is you are trying to link the history of blockchain uh, into your this current fresh block so every time this happens you create a new block you take the previous block's header and put it into your block that's how you link your block to the rest of the blockchain then there is n bits uh, merkle root hash i told you right that's the final hash header that's there and n bits is something that uh, extra additional information now these are not these are just main uh, component of a block but apart from that also there are a lot of other things that uh, you need to you know do nitty gritty check validation check uh, about the block now i'm i i won't be able to cover all of them but it's some of them are very self explanatory okay so here let's say i i show you uh, this hash so this hash you see right that's your block identity i told you right you take body you take header you combine both of them create a hash out of it that becomes your block hash now block capacity now capacity is uh, it tells you that you know uh, every block in a blockchain has some uh, limitations in terms of uh, size so earlier it was 1 mb but if with every uh, you know upgrade like btc uh, bitcoin bitcoin classic these are all different variants of blockchain so in ethereum you see the block at the end 1 mb is not enough uh, block you know size to have a let's say uh, millions of transaction in a single block so that's the limitation part of the bitcoin where you know you can essentially put so much so many transactions onto one particular block and then you have to create another block for other transactions so that's why the speed of the network becomes slow so sometimes it may happen that you know you are trying to do a transaction on bitcoin but it's taking let's say uh, 10 15 minutes to uh, do the transactions why because there are already some transactions which are getting added onto a bitcoin and in bitcoin every 10 minutes a new block gets created so essentially you will have to wait 10 minutes in order to you know confirm your transactions uh, there are other technologies which makes this uh, you know time faster but that's all you know it's not the core of the bitcoin it's just something that gets added on top of the bitcoin to increase the speed of the bitcoin okay uh distance again this is just a time limit uh btc is it tells you that what is the you know if there are 1000 transactions into the block what is the combined value in terms of bitcoin for that particular uh, you know block so that in terms of bitcoin now value is in terms of uh, us dollars so we uh, map uh, bitcoin to us dollars so the prices of us dollar keeps on fluctuating uh, for bitcoin so i am not i'm not exactly sure what is the price right now but let's say uh, earlier it was $40000 so for a single bitcoin is $40000 so let's say total sum of btc how much the dollar value for this particular bitcoin block is okay value today average today median today because it keeps on fluctuating that's why you see different values like value today average today and median input value as i told you right in bitcoin how transactions happens is you have to input some amount of bitcoin part of that amount will go to let's say a receiver and part will come back so input is something that you know for 1000 uh, transactions what is the total amount of uh, bitcoins inputted and output value is like how much is the total output is getting transacted because once that is going back to the sender is not exactly the transaction value okay so here you see transactions 1379 transactions are there witness inputs output fees so fees that you know the miner has taken in order to create that block that's essentially the fees so this is the structure of uh, you know block these are not the only parameters if you go and you know check on this uh, link uh, explorer blocks bitcoin there are n number of things okay um, 
So I've taken just a couple of them. Okay. So there is depth, size, version, Merkle root, difficulty. Difficulty is something that I'll come to. Uh, it's a very important part of mining. And that's where the whole game happens. Like who is miner, how the miner is earning money and how this competition works. Okay. And then the rest of the things are, you know, pretty straightforward minted. Uh, so minted is something that, uh, you know, how much uh, 6.25, I told you, right. Miners get some sort of fees in order to create that block. So right now this particular block, they got 6.25, 6.25 Bitcoins. Now consider, you know, this process and uh, fees it's, it's in thousands, uh, thousands of dollars. Reward, height, fees, these are all self-explanatory. Uh, if you don't uh, understand any of this, just take the term and Google it out. Google will give you everything. Okay. Uh, let's go to the main part. Uh, the one term that I skipped over there is called nouns. Okay. So this whole process of creating hashes, Merkle root for transactions, this hash, creating, calculating these values, these are very, uh, you know, quick process. It will happen in fractions of seconds because our computer processes are very fast. To do that, you don't require that much of time, that much of processing power. The actual game happens in this nouns. Okay. So consider nouns as a variable. Variable is something that, you know, let's say when we say in maths, right? Let's consider X is a variable and you can change the value of X in an equation to get a final answer. Similarly, this is a variable. And in this variable, you change values from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like keep on, you know, adding new values into this nouns, keep on changing the value of the nouns and then calculate the block header hash. So I told you, right, you take header, you take body and then you create a hash. So in header, there is essentially a variable which you have to keep on changing in order to calculate the correct hash. Now, what is correct hash? So in Bitcoin, especially for Bitcoin, there is a concept called proof of work. So when you create a block, you have to, you know, explain it to someone that, you know, you actually did that processing. Like no one's going to be believe you are, if you, you know, you change, if it's that easy, if, if it's an easy process, it's a, you know, processing, uh, not a processing heavy process, then probably you and me, everybody will go on creating blocks uh, just for the 6.25 Bitcoins. And everybody will be millionaire. And uh, so how do you prevent that from happening is you have to do intensive calculation. Now, earlier in 2010, as I said, right, you can use your laptop and you know do this calculation. But as the time increased and number of players or number of people in this peer-to-peer -peer network of Bitcoin increased, everybody want to do this, you know, mining and everybody wants to earn money. So that's when, you know, there is some set of difficulty. Difficulty is nothing but a you know, complex problem. Okay. Not everybody will be able to get an answer to that particular complex problem because it's very processing heavy, uh, you know, uh, problem when it's processing heavy. It means that, uh, earlier a single computer like MacBook or, you know, windows laptop used to calculate that, but now you require mining rigs. Now mining rigs is you, you must be knowing about supercomputers, right? So in your, uh, laptop, let's say, how do you increase post processing power is Either you get a better processor like Intel, Intel i5, i7 or AMD Ryzen, whatever processor you get. Second is RAM. Like you increase your RAM, like 4 GB, 16 GB or uh, you get a better graphic card. Graphic card is nothing but, uh, you know, it's additional uh, aid to your processor, which helps you do the calculation and processing faster. So earlier you could, you know, just ramp up your PC uh, to, you know, with, um, you know, best of the uh, processors and RAMs to calculate this faster. But as number of players increased, this processing power also increased so that now you require a specialized hardware. Now this hardware is specially meant for this particular operation. Like there is not no use of this hardware. If you Google it out, Bitcoin, uh, I think uh, it's called Bit Bitcoin mining hardware. Just Google it out. It's so, you know, this big uh, processor, okay, which is specially meant for calculating this. You can attach it to your, you know, mainframe computers. And those are big computers you attach. You keep, so one, let's say you attach one core, you'll be able to calculate this nouns in let's say one hour, but let's say you attach 10 cores, you will be able to do it 10 times faster. So consider in Bitcoin network where every 10 minutes, a single block gets created. Everybody needs to be very fast. Everybody needs to, you know, in that 10 minutes timer, everybody needs to create that block. 
and there are millions of people millions of miners who are trying to create this block so it's essentially a competition and in competition there is no rocket science everybody is just changing this nouns value from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to you'll essentially reach a point let's say at uh 1200 is a number which you replace in in place of nouns you get a hash value of a uh, block that is less than difficulty difficulty is one problem so that is satisfies that problem solution so that's when you can say that you know i have created this block successfully you can send it to everybody on the network and everybody can then validate whether you know whether you have actually solved that complex problem or not and then they'll go on verifying your hash of the transactions uh, validity of transactions uh, time stamp your block length and all the random checks but the intensive process which actually takes time is calculating this nouns and creating this block so it's essentially you know you uh, put zero calculate if not uh, uh, not satisfying the problem put one put two put three again calculate then you check whether it's satisfying the problem or not so it's essentially trial and error competition and whoever wins this competition gets to have that you know 6.25 bitcoin reward same process update the nouns calculate the block hash which looks something like this and check if it is less than the difficulty less than difficulty as in is just satisfying the math problem or not if it is not uh, satisfying repeat the whole process again if it is satisfying yay block created so what you do is uh, you send that block essentially to everyone and everyone will add that block onto uh, that so here you see right you created that block everybody got that block okay everybody will validate and they'll add it into your uh, uh, local blockchain copy so that's how you know the whole mining happens and that's when we see that it's very difficult to become a miner so earlier a single you know single individuals like you and me used to mine but now everybody has started creating a pool so there are big pools in china switzerland and you know countries us where essentially you know let's say a pool of 200 300 folks or let's like 1000 folks they come together with their processing power they create a huge uh, a uh, warehouse where uh, the whole warehouse is filled up with uh, you know this specialized uh, hardware which will do this processing so let's say a 1000 people uh, pitched in money and created a warehouse the whole uh, aim of the warehouse is to do this mining and whatever the reward is coming they'll uh, distribute it among let's say those 100 folks so that's how mining pools work so if you want to do mining uh, there are binance pools just search bitcoin mining pools and you can join them but uh, before joining them you will have to essentially pay some fees saying that you know this is my money and i want to be become part of this and this is the processing power that i'll bring uh, with me okay now uh, i told you right this whole process requires a lot of processing so if you must have heard a lot of people talking about uh, why bitcoin is uh, not uh, sustainable because this you know when you have these are just mining pools that i was talking about right it's long uh, warehouse sort of things where everybody has stacked up their uh, uh, specialized software and everybody is using energy like electricity so consider a big warehouse how much electricity it uses every 10 seconds to compute that one particular block and there is no guarantee whether that block is going to be accepted by uh, everyone or not because millions of people are doing it probably someone's uh, block gets accepted before you you may have done right calculation but someone did it before so let's say there is this calculation that you know a single creation of single block can take up a uh, electricity worth uh, which is able to fuel a city for a, sing, a whole day so that much electricity is going in 10 minutes just to calculate one block which may or may not be used by blockchain uh, rest of the folks in blockchain so that's why it's very energy intensive process and that's why it's called proof of work that you have to do some work in order to get accepted into this whole uh, community of blockchain so that's why it's not sustainable because obviously electricity is uh, right now we how do we generate electricity by uh, uh, it's not uh, only a part of electricity is being generated by renewable resources the rest of it is still you know coal based uh, you know nuclear power based reactor based uh, electricity and that's why it's not good for environment which i totally understand and that's why you know uh, all these different blockchains if you see uh, ethereum uh, then there is uh, polygon they all come up with their own ways uh, to you know uh, change this consensus process 
consensus is like someone's doing mining right so this whole mining process everybody agrees that you know this is the final block that we are adding so that's like giving your consensus saying that okay everyone is now uh, i i i showed you this right so everybody says that looks okay looks okay looks okay so when everybody says uh, says that looks okay that means they are giving the confirmation thing cons consensus saying that you know uh, this is what we are looking for and that's essentially the consensus the term means okay so to reach to their consensus they have devised different uh, algorithms so uh, here in bitcoin it's proof of work that means you have to do some processing but in ethereum the, recently the whole ethereum network earlier it was also on proof of work but now they have shift to proof of stake proof of stake is let's say uh, there are 10 miners in a network and earlier those 10 miners used to use their uh, you know processing power to calculate that block but now they are, they don't have to you know solve that complex uh, sum difficulty i i told you right they don't have to use the processing power to calculate that difficulty they will just create a block and let's say stake let's say uh, 10 ethereum saying that these are my 10 ethereum and this is the block that i have created you guys validate it whether you know this particular block is valid or not if it is valid i get my mining reward and uh, if it is not valid then i lose my 10 ethereum that i have staked so it's like betting on something like this is the block i have created and i'm betting this much amount of money that this particular block is valid and everybody will verify if people see that this block is not valid you lose your stake now staking is uh, you know one of the most promising algorithm after proof of work because second largest network in the world ethereum has recently migrated to proof of stake earlier it was on proof of uh, work which was not sustainable and that's why you know ethereum is uh, said to be slightly better than bitcoin uh, because it has uh, moved to a more eco friendly uh, way to sustain the network so the miners now have to you know stake their money in order to get uh, mine the block okay then there is uh, you go on google and search it how many proof of x algorithms are there it's n number of algorithms are there like for example what is proof of capacity proof of capacity is where you you show to the network saying that you have this much of storage memory capacity uh, and then people will verify that and people will accept the block then there is a another algorithm called proof of burn so proof of burn is something where it's uh, it's still it's slightly crazy 